right, well here's the finished product. This is our final video in our series about the fast forward superchargers. And we're just gonna do a little review of some of the stuff that we have finished up since our last video. Um, in our last video, we had the supercharger in and we're kind of reviewing, um, you know, sort of the basic install. And now we really got down into all of the little detail stuff, um, which there is quite a bit, but we're gonna go through it and sort of once you see it, it's really not as bad as, um, as it kind of all looks when you've got all the hoses laying everywhere. So we'll start over here on this side. So of course we've got the supercharger here and the fuel system turned out pretty nice. Uh, it was looking a little bit chaotic at the beginning but right here we've got our return line and our feed line and those are just hooked into the factory hard lines that come with the car. So we've essentially extended those lines and just for cleanliness we actually ran them over around behind the ABS unit and so they come around to the back behind the intake. You can see right down in there is where the feed line hooks up to the rail and that flows through the rail. Um, this line here also comes off of the fuel rail to feed the fifth injector. And then we've got the fuel pressure regulator which then runs the excess fuel through the return line back along that same path. So we've got all that set up and we've got the solenoid here um, that allows the ECU to control the regulator. Um, so we left that, that's basically factory hookup, the, um, still running the stock ECU, so it's gonna be looking for all of those signals and to make adjustments using that. So now if we come over here to the firewall, we've mounted the vacuum distribution block. Now this kit gives you a lot of freedom to sort of mount things wherever you need to or route hoses however you want. So we really sort of put in a lot of thought about you know where some of the different components are gonna be located around the engine bay um, to sort of limit the length or the total length of the hoses that were gonna to have to be used so that we weren't you know, mounting something down on this side that was gonna to have to have a hose going to it and then back from it. Um, so we opted to put the distribution block on the firewall right back here. So this side is actually the vacuum source for it. So this goes down um, to the underside of the throttle body to get the original sort of vacuum source to power everything that's in that block. And we've got this first one here. This goes to the EVAP purge solenoid. So we've got that routed right there. This one here is going to the bypass valve on the supercharger. So that will basically open under vacuum to help sort of um, reduce the amount of load on the engine at idle. And then this one here is the vacuum source for the EGR system. So that hose runs down. There's some little solenoids just down under here. You can see right down there, there's those solenoids and those run the EGR system. So they need to have this vacuum source coming off there to feed it. That would have normally gone to the intake manifold. And then those solenoids then have a line that goes back here that we ran over to the, the EGR valve itself, which I think we showed in previous videos that that gets relocated because normally that would get attached to the intake manifold itself. And so you can see it down there, it's on that little plate and then the plate attaches, you can see that brass hose there. And that brass hose goes directly into the supercharger. So the exhaust gases basically can flow through there. Um, that was kind of a pain to deal with. Um, it's mounted using a hard line, 
The hard line that the kit provides didn't quite line up the way I wanted it to. Um, so what we ended up doing is the, the hard line from the kit is a quarter inch diameter tube. So we actually used quarter inch brake line. It was a little easier to bend and shape and then I could make it as long or as short as I needed. And that made life a lot easier um, to use that instead. So we got that all set up, and then we've got this line here, which runs along the back of the firewall, and that goes over to the cruise control system, which you can see the cruise control has been relocated. I think we talked a little bit about that kit in the previous videos, um, but the cruise control would have been over here um, where the intake was. So that gets moved out of the way. So that requires a vacuum source, so that's this one here. And then we've got this last larger diameter one. Again, goes across the firewall. And that provides the vacuum for the brake booster. Um, important note on this, there is a one-way check valve in this line. So you don't want to just run you know, your own custom line all the way across. Um, this check valve is important. It basically holds vacuum and brake assist uh, if the engine is off. So either if it stalls, you'll still have brake, you'll still have power brakes, you'll still have assist from that. Um, or even just when you turn off the engine, if your foot's on the brake, um, it'll help hold the brakes. So it's a it's an important convenience and safety feature. So we just used a, a junction here to connect the custom line that we put in, and we just cut off the stock line there and kept the valve. You can almost see it's kind of raised there. So important detail on that. One of the other critical systems that we had to relocate for this kit was the idle controller. So you can see right down here, we've got the idle controller and it comes with um, sort of a relocation plate and mounting bracket. And so we've got that just mounted there onto the frame. So the way this is designed to work is this was normally the place that would connect to the intake on the idle controller and normally it would sit sort of over in this area on the bottom side of the throttle body. So we completely changed the location. Um, we had to extend the wire harness for it, but that turned out pretty nice. And so it's gonna be pulling in intake air from this tube, which it's then getting um, basically from the intake. So it's a similar path to what it would have had um, in the stock setup. So it's basically pulling that air that's gone through the air filter and the MAF. So it's measured air coming in through, and then it goes through the adapter plate and then comes out through this hose. So then from this hose, that feeds over. We've got it tucked down under, but it goes into uh, the intake just behind the throttle body there. And it, despite being relocated and having some longer hoses going to it, um, it all works perfectly fine. Um, so that turned out pretty good. Um, one of the other wiring harnesses that we had to extend, you can see down here, there's this whole loom and this is where the idle controller normally would have been. So you can see we extended that over to that side. And then also the, the throttle position sensor would have been right near here. So we extended that and ran that loom back so it can go right here to the throttle position sensor. We also have the wires here that plug into this fifth injector. Um, this is something that we had to run. So these go back down through the firewall and go to the ECU. So the ECU is located behind the back seat and we showed in one of the earlier videos um, the plug and play harness that comes with this so you can use the stock ECU. Well in there there is a manifold pressure sensor and also the driver for this injector. So we've got this wiring here that we extended go back towards the ECU and you can see here there's this very small diameter 
vacuum hose that plugs into the side of the intake manifold and that also runs back to the ECU um, to go to that pressure sensor. And then of course we've got the intake up here. This is actually not part of the kit. Um, the kit comes with sort of like a corrugated black tube um, that's flexible that you lay across there. Um, but our customer opted to go with this hard tube. It's made by DDM Works, I believe. Um, it didn't fit exactly right. Um, I think it's really designed to work for an NB, so we had to make some adjustments. Um, I tried talking to them, but they told me that it should fit everything. Um, so after I did a little bit of grinding and TIG welding, it did end up fitting. Um, so just watch out for that if, uh, if you're looking for that option. Everything that I could find about it, it was used on NBs only. So there's a little different layout. Um, partially the height back here was a little bit of a problem because I think the geometry is a little different in an NB. And then the position of the MAF and the filter box are considerably further forward in the NB. So this can kind of sit lower and there was actually an additional extension tube to get the MAF out into this position because in the NB it obviously doesn't have the pop-ups so everything sits a little further forward. So just something to note on there. Turned out pretty nice, um, but it was a little bit, a uh, little bit of a headache to deal with. Um, on the topic of the filter box, we did have to trim the filter box a little bit. You can see it actually sort of ground this section out a little bit because it was sitting too far forward and hitting this bumper. And then this lip on the front was hanging just a little bit too far forward as well and kind of had a little bit of an angle to it. So we cut a slightly different angle, sort of just ground it smooth. Um, and the, the big problem with that was that it was catching up here, there's this flap that sort of seals off the engine compartment. Um, it goes right in that seam there. And it has some additional structure on the back of it that was basically resting on top of this and not letting the hood close. So a little bit of trimming there made everything fit a lot better. And then of course we got the radiator upgrade, from Super Miata, add a little bit of bling to the engine bay. And there you have it. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover on this. Um, I'm sure I missed a whole bunch of stuff. Please feel free to comment on this video. I'll try to answer any questions that you guys have. Um, if there's too much that I missed, I, I might make a, uh, an additional video as well. So give me your feedback. Let me know what you guys think or what you have questions on. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.